or good handball. New corner attacks the goal. Low goes to ground. It bounces. Kelly will probably run it towards the boundary line. He's caught. Devonport. Craven's on his own at the goal square. Yeah, the, amazing, the, the Collingwood memories in 92, the spray, the goal from the boundary when, you know, the, the bit of commentary from Bruce McAvaney where Craven's on his own in the goal square and 80,000 people. It was our first game at the MCG since they reopened it with the Great Southern Stand and he then kicked a huge goal against Collingwood in the final. Obviously, we know for those listening to the podcast, some of you might get in and tweet us that there's a few uh, stories around Craig Devonport's life outside of football but for obvious legal reasons we can't really talk about those and i hope you understand that we're not ignoring it we are aware of it um but that's not our matter to discuss and it's not necessarily what the show is about so hopefully that is clearing up any of that um we look to some listener questions our reminder also that we have been on youtube for a while but we are kicking that up a gear as well so please subscribe and like and comment on our videos we'll, we'll do a few different things around how we package those up and uh, leave us reviews and ratings on whatever your podcast providers are, Spotify, iTunes, Facebook, any of those types of things. So just, um, you know, you can give us whatever reviewing you like. Hopefully it's five stars, but you can be as honest as you want. Um, looking at some listener questions, a few points we haven't discussed, which we might if we get time, but some listener questions uh, Zaka says, have you missed the feeling of dread and impending doom that comes with the St Kilda game, especially one against Geelong? Interesting question. Um, I think the dread part is always normal. There's there's all of those nerves that kick in. Probably not the feeling of dread so much, but yeah, the, the butterflies and the stomach hate your uh, coming back and um, you, you certainly miss those. The, the, the feeling of dread, I think, comes from not taking the opportunity to beat them at this time, mm. I think. I think that's more where it is you go, oh, we should win. And in the back of your head, it just goes, but you probably won't. <laughs> it's, it's just the, the whole Geelong thing, as we were saying before. Like, yeah, I mean, you, we go in with a lot more confidence than what we have other times, I think. that That's one thing we can say about it. That, yeah, it, it, it's there for us to take, I think, this game. So... Yeah, as I said, get down there and just, well, the 15 secure fans that can get yeah. into the game. <laughs> I was cheer, say. cheer loud and, <laughs> um, yeah, get us over the line. Um, yeah, it's the, those that are getting down, they might have to watch it in pubs. Uh, Michael, similar question to a couple of other people who have, have asked along these lines. Who will be relief ruckman on Saturday to give Row a chop out? And Shay says thoughts on Cheeto, uh, Mitch Owens being second ruck option. Do we need to bring someone else in? Nick, how do you feel about um, that option with Mitch? Uh, we talked about this a little bit last year. And uh, look, I think if, if Jack Hayes was fit and healthy, then he's the obvious one to play that kind of forward role. You know, center half forward can push up to the wing, can pinch hit in the ruck, and do all those sorts of things. Um, but clearly, he's he's not fit and healthy, and and he hasn't been for a while. Um, Mitch Owens is the one that Ross has gone to, I think, in some of those moments over the last twelve months, and and clearly in the two preseason games, he's gone back to that. I think, you know, we we might see some occasions where it's you know, down in defence that that Cordy takes a uh, a tap. Every now and then, but I think if it's if it's through the middle of the ground or up forward, then Mitch it looks like is is the favourite to 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 kind of take that role. Um, I don't particularly like it, but I think we have to accept that that's what Ross is doing and and what he wants to do. And I think at this point we just have to kind of trust Ross. Look, I think Mitch is pretty good at it. Um, yeah, and I agree. Yeah, yeah. and certainly as an extra midfielder, it's important. It's just you're always worried about slightly undersized players getting hurt in the ruck and mm -hmm. and those well, sorts well, of the things. The way the yeah. way you've got to watch that is you need to if they're rucking on the field, row row yeah. is on the field. If yeah. he goes off, give Rowan a rest, or yeah, bring him off slight like slightly afterwards just to see if he can dominate for a few minutes and then then give him the quick rest and get him back out there again like he doesn't have to be out there until there's a goal kicked that that's one no. thing when you look at it so around the ground a, a ball in um ruck contest he's probably 
like there's not as much danger in that clearly. But it's the centre yeah. bounce one that you're more worried about. And you go, well, as long as Rowan can, Rowan, Rowan can get out there when there is a goal kicked and get back into the ruck position, then, then we should be fine. Yeah, and I think... Um... Look, I think Mitch ultimately is going to end up being an elite midfielder and that's where he'll play. I think that's where he's, you know, as a junior calling him in when we're talking to Shifter about it, he was a phenomenal midfielder and maybe playing as a Ruckman slash fourth midfielder is the, the start of mm. that journey back in there maybe. So, um, yeah, it's, look, he, one thing about Mitch, and it's amazing to say that about a 19-year-old, he's basically done the job wherever we've put him. So mm. um, I'm sure that'll happen again. Um, Bobby Khan H says, uh, what's a pass mark for 2024? Well, you'd hope most people's pass mark is being pretty well in that same spot we were as last year, at least. Yeah. If we can get to that final again, if, I mean, we don't know who clearly, who we would be coming up against is it's quite open this year. And yeah, I mean we could end up with against a Collingwood or something if they drop a little bit or something like that. And if we go, if we get put up against them in the first final, you think, well, we've got a real struggle on hand there because clearly the last year's premiers, it's going to be hard to defeat them, that sort of thing. And you go, well, let's get to that point first. Let's get to that point of maybe battling for fifth, get back to sixth, maybe possibly, yeah. Seventh, if we, I mean, if it's if it's Melbourne team, we're still in Melbourne for a final. It's it just that area is where we need to look and go. Okay, let's get back to that point and try again, get past what we did last year, and if we get to that point there, that's where we get can launch from. So, I, I think, yeah, same as last year, where we were, get there first, and then see what we can do from there. Yeah, I think that's that's fair. I think as a pass mark, Nick, you generally want to hold your ground. So finish where you finished the year before. I mean, if you're a wooden spoon or a pass mark is to move up. But I think if you're a final side like us, it would be to to stay around about that mark um, as a pass. And then obviously better than that as a success. Yeah, it's, generally. It's a, it's, a, it's a really interesting question for a team like ours because, you know, a lot of people still think that we made finals probably a little bit prematurely last season. Um, and there is kind of a general consensus that there are a couple of clubs that are on the up as well. Um, you know, whether they make finals or, or not, but you know, a couple of, a couple of clubs that should be improving off the back of, you know, their second half of last year, their draft and trade periods, their, um, you know, all, all those sorts of things. So a pass mark is, is very difficult to identify because a lot of people will just say, well, it's finals. But we can be a better team than last year and not yeah. make finals. If if a yeah. lot of those things happen, that there's three or four clubs that get better and they play finals, we can be a better team than we were last year and not make finals. And I think we're at a stage where we are still in a building phase and and finals isn't the be all and end all as much as I want to be there and and you know, we want to be there, we we feel like we need to be there and and all those sorts of things. Um if there, if there are clear steps forward, we improve our, our game style, you know, we're more confident ball in hand, um, you know, hitting targets in terms of transition, all those sorts of things. There are a lot of things that we can continue getting better at. And I think if we do that and we continue building and taking those steps to get better as a team and, and the individuals get better and the coaching gets better and all these sorts of things, then I think if we can sit there at the end of round 24 or whatever it is and say, we are better than we were last year then I think I'll be content with that, whether we're in sixth, eighth or ninth, it doesn't really matter. I, I, I want to play finals. I'm, I love that taste of it that we got again last September. Um, and ultimately that's where we want to be and where we have to be if we want to be a contending team. But I'm not sure that that needs to be the pass mark um, this season. I think it will be in coming seasons. But I think if we can see that we are a better team than last year, then I think we're on the right track. And and that's ultimately where where we should be talking. Yeah, I think um, if, you, if your ultimate aim is to win a flag, do you move closer to that? That doesn't mean you go up the ladder or whatever it may be, but just if you are closer to 
midnight or whatever it is on the on the clock. Um, and Tim says, how do you feel about experts across the board and their group think that it's a given we drop out and teams like Adelaide, Geelong and the Bulldogs will certainly move back in. We weren't far off the Glory Boy Orange team last year and we should be better this season. Look, I agree with those last two points. We had a big go against us in that final against the Giants and they were close to the best team in the comp by the end of the year and may well be now. Um, Adelaide, Yes, Bulldogs, yes, Geelong, yes. I can understand the improvement in those sides, but I, st- I think we stack up list-wise pretty well against all of them. And you made the point, Tim, group think. I th- actually think there's been a little bit of that in there. there. There are some analysts that might be against us and there are some analysts who are for us. I think the wheels turned a little bit in the last few weeks. I think that some have come back around the other way to thinking we might be better than, um, you know, than they perhaps first thought. But I actually think some of the, because there's so many publications these days, but if you look at the Herald Sun or the AFL website and a lot of those where they've tipped ladders, I actually think it's lazy, to be honest. I think not everybody watches every game. Not everybody analyzes every list. I think it's almost like, oh, who's going to be the big slider this year? Oh, everyone's saying St Kilda, aren't they? I'll put mm. them in there. I, to be honest, I genuinely think it's a, a little bit of that. I think there are some people that have analysed it and come to that opinion, and that's fine. You're allowed to do that. Um, not everybody's going to say you're going to be fantastic, and and you won't always be. But I do get the feeling there is a little bit of that, oh, that's the consensus, so um, that must be right. So I'll tip that as well. Um, yeah, it's 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 been pretty lazy, and it shouldn't annoy me but it does a little bit I, th- I think it's been we've almost been criminally underrated in many respects i think our season last year i had i had an argument with someone on social media last year who said that our season last year was the most disappointing of any side in the competition and i'm like that is the stupidest opinion i've ever heard on sports like any sport <laughs> ever um and it's remarkable that things like that exist but um yeah, look, let them let them think what they want to think, and it just makes it better if you stick it up. And so, well, yeah. we go back to that, the chat we had with with Fine yeah. last week, and he made the point that if if our list was wearing different colours, would the sentiment be the same? And and I think I think he's right that I, I think that our list does stack up, and I think that there is plenty of improvement to come in, in a team that that had a pretty decent year last year. Like, yes, there were moments, and yes, the second half was a bit shaky, and and all those sorts of things, but. They're a year stronger, a year older, a year wiser, another year into the coaching group. You know, all these things that are important for a, a, a young team, essentially, um, that I think I think we get better. And so this the consensus that we're a we're a big slider, I think, like you said, is is lazy. Um, doesn't necessarily guarantee that we make finals either, but I think that narrative is lazy, and I agree. Mm, so the, the thinking of one expert, um who who has been very critical of us in the past who's jumping on us now um david king Mm. i sort of think just imagine how excited he would be if we were north melbourne and machito owens machito owens played for him he would be exploding he (laughs) He he wouldn't get a game game for north because they've got 10 mateus filippos in there. yeah that's right he he wouldn't have to worry they've got too many too many filippos in there but if we were actually (laughs) but if this was actually (laughs) north melbourne uh, Mm. he is getting so excited about us this year and he's probably a good um a, a, a good one to follow sort of thing because you think he has been very critical of us in past years and at times you sort of look back and go he was kind of right it was, it was we didn't live up to possibly what we could have been in those few years and um he, he, he got he was a little bullish about us last year he said look he, he kind of thought we might go okay, and yes, we made finals. But at the start of this year, he's got very excited about us, and so I thought mm. I'd go, hey, let, let's ride the way that he's actually given us for once, because, yeah, it, it's since he's been in the media, I guess we haven't <laughs> done a whole lot, but, yeah, he's, if we could get as excited about it, Mitch, Mitch as he does, then, yeah, let's go. <laughs> And unlike the others, David King went to every Victorian team training and observed mm. that type of stuff. So that's actual proper yeah. proper analysis. So um, hopefully that ends up being right. Just a couple of rapid fires before we wrap things up, only because we didn't discuss them. So it's almost an inner word because I don't know how much more we need to talk about it. But inner words, H, Taron Thomas, if he were to be available. No, not the moment. No. Nick? 
I'm the same. It's a no, no for me. I think if we were potentially closer to a flag and you've got to have that kind of ruthless streak when it comes to building a list and, and a, a premiership team, then maybe closer, but it's a, it's a definite no for me at this point. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a definite no. I don't think we need everything that comes with that. Um, and there's still some, you know, unsavory stuff around it. Um, ben King, if he does resign as expected with the Gold Coast, is that it? I mean, to be honest, it's felt like that's been it for a while. And look, I don't think it's such a bad thing. I think everyone leaves the Gold Coast and it's not a case of, I mean, stuff them. They're a you know, plastic popcorn club, but I don't think it's good for the competition if you've got players walking out all the time in that situation. So um, do we put the Ben King thing to bed, Nick? I think so. I think so. I, I agree with you. I think it's not, it's not good that you end up having feeder teams for the big clubs. Um, we you know, we, we've been that at times, um, and, and we've seen a, a lot of gun kids play kind of three or four years at, at some of these smaller clubs and then go on to, to Essendon or Carlton or, you know, Collingwood or whatever. Um, and it, it's not good for the competition. And, and if Ben King can kind of be that one that says, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to play my career on the Gold Coast, uh, and, and hopefully lead this team to some success, then good on him. Um, obviously I'd love to see him in red, white and black, but I, I just don't think it's going to happen. When well, his brother wins eight Coleman's, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> and I mean, the thing is, uh, if we look at it at the moment, do we need him? Do, is, is there going to be really that spot right now? So who who not our we, highest who priority? Yeah, who yeah. Would we kick out to bring him in. That's, yeah. that's the... certainly not our highest priority. Yeah, yeah. No, well, I think potentially when he was when he was playing as a key defender, I think that was when mm -hmm. you know in the, the reality suited the narrative at that point as a key forward. Right now, do you do you drop Tim Membry? Probably. <laughs> I mean, no, no. on pure skill, you probably do, but from a team building perspective, do you probably not? I mean, Sharman King King would play ahead of Sharman, um, but but again, how does that make your forward line too unbalanced at, at that stage? Mm. Um, yeah, I think we we have other priorities that we need to to kind of focus mm. on in terms of building this list. And the Gold Coast have a few of those that I would take for sure, like through the midfield, even defence. So. Um, yeah, that's not a knock on Ben. He's a star, but I think they've got even some resources that I would. If they said come and take anyone from the Suns, I'm not taking him first. Put it I'll that take way. So Noah Anderson, hundred um, <laughs> percent, or even even I mean Matt Rowles showing him he had 25 yeah. clearances or something on the weekend. Um, yeah. Powell, the, the other youngster in the middle. Um, yeah, there's a number that you would look at in that space, but. Um, in the meantime, we're working about working out who they'll pick against Geelong, which you, you may already know at the time of listening to this. But uh, we are finally here, and hopefully uh, we have a victory over Geelong at Canadian Park this century. It's been a, a little while, so um, feels like we're ready. It's the, the, the most, I almost said the readiest, but that's not a word. The most ready we've been uh, in a very long time to do that. So, um, yeah, bring it on, and for those... Uh, heading down the highway, enjoy the trip, and hopefully we can come back with some four points. But uh, go Saints.